Hi, I'm Peter Matthews, editor of Firehouse, and I'd like to thank you for joining us on today's quick chat video. We're here with Mike Cannon from Hearst to talk about their new smart tools and the eDraulic 3.0. So, Mike, thanks for joining us today. A lot of exciting news in the last couple of weeks uh, about, you know, some of the new equipment that Hearst has rolled out. So before we get into the, to the meat of the video, can you tell us a little bit about your background uh, with Hearst and the emergency services, please? So many folks grow up in the fire service uh, as a family business, and uh, I'm one of those weird ones, I guess you could say, who grew up in the supporting firefighters uh, from an equipment role. I actually grew up in it, uh, Cannon Safety and Health, which had a Cannon Fire and Safety Division uh, assisting firefighters with uh, equipment and safety supply. Um, I, I really fell in love with the industry as a, as a young kid, and skipping all the history, uh, 27 years later, I've uh, exclusively worked in uh, fire equipment and, and uh, protective equipment business, as well as a rescue tool business, concentrated in rescue about the last 15 years. Okay, that's great. And, you know, again, having grown up uh, reading Firehouse long before I joined the staff, you know, the, the Hearst uh, ads have always stood out, right? The Green Cross, the, the just this powerful tool that really just kind of changed the way the fire service operates. So it's, it's exciting to see that you've come up through sort of the same channel, right? Uh, I was in the fire service before, but, uh, you know, here we are now, we're, we're talking about these products that that really impact the way that firefighters operate and and expedite, you know, rescues. So, so thanks for joining us today. And, and let's, uh, let's dive into some of the uh, updates that are going on with Hearst. So, you know, the technology is evolving uh, with Hearst's extrication tools. Um, one of the one of the phrases that we've heard, you know, in our recent discussions is speed of rescue. Uh, can you talk about that as well as how uh, training plays into uh, the role of speed of rescue, please? Yeah, in that in that equation, yeah, it's it's a really important question, I think, in this day and age, uh, because we have automobiles advancing at the, the technology of both their construction and the uh, ultra high strength steels used. It's advancing at such a rapid rate. Uh, you know, I would, as much as we want to sell new technology, I'd be the first to say that the, the, the speed of rescue is critical for patient viability, um, but that speed of rescue is mostly determined uh, by the competence of the, the rescuer and their level of training. And I, I think um, it, it needs to be said that, frankly, very experienced rescues who train very regularly and update their uh, training, and a lot of times could be much, much faster in packaging a patient than less experienced users, perhaps with brand new technology. So we're happy to support this objective of speed of rescue. Uh, the new E3 tool has a controllable turbo feature uh, to help advance um, the speed of rescue. Uh, but I think it needs to be said that at the end of the day, the best thing any fire department can do uh, to quicken their patient packaging times is, is training, training, and more training. Great, and thank you. And so would that, component of training is, is the equipment itself. So uh, we recently had the chance to get the hands-on with the Smart Dash, the eDraulic 3.0. Um, let's talk about the Smart Dashboard, um, what's on the display and how that ultimately helps rescuers understand what's going on at the extrication scene. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, with, the, with the advent of the E3 tool, uh, you know, we wanted to build on the success of, of really a groundbreaking technology, which was to take battery powered hydraulics and make them uh, submersible. So uh, not only is it completely a, a waterproof system, but we've added this smart dashboard to give real time information to the rescuer to make quicker decisions, uh, again, to trim seconds off of each moment in that rescue. If we can trim a few seconds here and a few seconds there across an entire uh, evolution, we can save several minutes, which, uh, which certainly serves this, this goal of, of uh, speedy patient packaging time. So on the dashboard, we now have a constant real-time battery display. A lot of concern about in the speed of rescue, if you have to change your battery, that can really slow you down. Uh, our system now tells you in real time exactly what your battery display is without touching a button. Um, in addition, a lot of time can be wasted moving a control valve in the wrong direction. I've seen uh, many experienced rescuers in the heat of the moment turn the control valve in the open direction instead of the closing direction well, now we put LED displays right on the dash. So as soon as you turn that control valve, it is indicating the direction you're moving. So it uh, hopefully will train out some of the bad habits uh, that some folks might have. Uh, as well, uh, in many cases, when you're making a cut, uh, especially a blind cut where you have so much crushed metal in an area where you need to say, make a relief cut, 
the rescuer in many cases can't see the movement of the blades. Uh, so they may uh, uh, stall on a cut longer than they need to when the cutter's already closed, or they may be stalled on something and not realize they are unable to cut it. So we've added a really useful feature, which is a pump power indicator. And it correlates the voltage draw with the pressure in the pump. And so it, uh, it tells the rescuer, am I still advancing with greater and greater pressure and power? Uh, and if the unit goes into uh, relief, meaning the, the relief valve kicks on because it's maxed out its pressure and either the blades are already closed or it's deadheaded on something uncuttable. Uh, now the pump uh, power indicator will uh, flutter back and forth telling you it's in relief. So this will speed up uh, any rescuer's ability to judge, am I, am I finished? Can I back out and make the next cut or the, or the next maneuver? And then one feature that we've added uh, that I think addresses a very serious concern moving forward with uh, ultra high strength steel. These new metals don't really bend in the normal way. Yeah, they bend a little bit, but largely they fracture when you cut them. This has made a catastrophic cutter failure a more possible when in a bad uh, position. At a bad angle to the, the metal being cut, you can have what's called cutter roll, where the pistons are so strong in all 10,000 PSI cutters out in the market, they're all more uh, powerful enough to overpower the blade's ability to stay together in a, in a roll if you start with a bad position. So we've added a technology um, where basically when the cutter is in the second stage of the pump and the cutter um, is in a 15 degree axial roll or greater, now the power on the dashboard, the power button will illuminate red. It doesn't go into audible alarm. It does not mean you're about to have a cutter failure in that exact moment. What it does mean, the rescuer should start paying closer attention to their cutter roll because it's now detected a circumstance where you could potentially have an issue uh, in the pending several seconds if you keep doing what you're doing. Um, and then lastly, we've put automatic uh, temperature control a warning and a saltwater battery indicator. The new technology uh, does offer an optional saltwater battery. Uh, however, due to a higher expense, there's obviously a lower cost standard battery that's waterproof, just can't be exposed to salt. For those communities that might have a mixed uh, response area, there's an indicator there. So when they put the correct battery in, the batteries are different colors, but just to remind them they have the appropriate equipment uh, attached, uh, it can indicate that as well. All of these features are automatic. There's no buttons to push. And the idea being is to arm the firefighter or the rescuer with as much information as possible so they can move as swiftly as possible to the task at hand and not worry about the equipment as much. And it's great. I mean, so we were looking at the other day and, and essentially it's, it's you know, right there between, between the grip and, and the handle itself. So so the operator can really keep an eye on everything, right? They, they talk about situational awareness and, and fire service, and, and I think that's a key element. You don't have to have a bunch of eyes on it. So in a lot of areas where you know uh, uh, staffing is very limited, the one firefighter that's operating that tool can really have an idea of what's going on, almost that 360 view based on what they can see on the dashboard, uh, which is- Yeah, absolutely. I think element. no one would argue that the heads-up display in the SCBA uh, has, has been a real game changer for, for the fire service by again, passively giving them critical information. And that's what we're trying to do. Uh, not interrupt or, or change the way they do the job, but arm them with information. Okay, great. And so you talked about, you know, the, the saltwater environment, but let's talk about environmental durability. Uh, I know that's again, something that, that Hearst is kind of focused on as, as the tools have evolved. So what is environmental durability and how does that impact uh, the way the firefighters are using the tools right now? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think this is a, a, a really critical question. When we try to uh, advance the technology, we do what we call internally VOC studies, the voice of the customer. And the voice of the customer has to drive everything we do. And uh, it was quite clear to us that some of the busiest rescue companies in the country were, were giving us very consistent feedback. I have to have those hose line tools in our rig as a just in case. I end up uh, typically in a water uh, environment most battery tools in the market are IP54 rated. They can't be submerged or they fail immediately or, or within seconds. Um, so what we wanted to do is give the compartment space back to the fire department. How do we get them back to one set of tools that have all the advantages of battery, quick deployment, multiple tools in use at the same time, 
uh, but also address some of the limitations that we traditionally think about when we think about batteries. So the two biggest limitations are uh, temperature, very, very high and, uh, and low temperatures, as well as water and salt water exposure. So th this has been a driving direction of, of um, you know, where we've been headed uh, for a long time. It, to be honest, it's one of the reasons we don't use a commercially, uh, a retail battery that you would buy in Lowe's, because to be honest, as much as we very much respect the high quality of, of some of those products, they're really not designed for the rigors of the rescue environment, uh, which we all know cars don't conveniently uh, crash on a nice sunny day all the time. Uh, you know, first responders have to endure some of the most brutal environmental uh, circumstances, storms, floods, uh, uh, terrible temperatures, and so on. Our, our new battery can tolerate a working temperature of over 110 degrees. That's simply not wow. available in a retail battery. Um, uh, as well, we couldn't find any battery on the market that was IP uh, uh, 67 or 68 rated at the time. Uh, we put our, our OEM partner to an IP 68 standard. So now we have a battery that really, I would say almost meets a, a sort of a military use specification uh, that can be used under, in 11 feet of depth. Uh, you can change batteries in water uh, for continuous uh, use. So to us, it was about extending the reach of these tools uh, to all kinds of rescue environments, not just auto extrication. That's great. And again, really just as it's evolving, it's really amazing what you can do, you know, just from 10 years ago to now as, as this transition has taken place. So, so with that, Mike, you know, I get, I'll wrap up with one final question and just curious now at this point is uh, departments that are purchasing electric tools versus the traditional hydraulic tools and maybe traditional isn't even the word for hydraulic tools anymore. Uh, what are you seeing? What are the trends in the market for what's being purchased? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, you know, I could say this in, in short, We've been in the hydraulic rescue tool business so longer than any other company on, you know, in the world. And um, uh, we continue to make hose line products and, and certainly will to support existing customers. But the truth is uh, all incoming orders, it's about 96 to 98% of hydraulic tools that are purchased are battery driven hydraulic uh, tools in the form of one of our hydraulic platforms. Uh, the market at large, I, I imagine it might be closer to 70%. Other manufacturers, uh, started building battery tools later, uh, so their their evolution towards battery may be a, a little bit of a different mix. Okay. Well, Mike, thanks so much for joining us today. Again, I really appreciate it. So we were talking about eDraulics 3.0, uh, including the smart dashboard. Uh, we'll put a link here so that you can go visit the, uh, the Hearst site and find out more information about it. Mike, thanks so much for joining us today. We appreciate it, and uh, stay safe out there, and, and, and keep on uh, educating the fire service on what they need to do uh, to pull people out of vehicles that, uh, that, that are trapped. So thank you. Well, we, we appreciate the time, Pete. Thanks for having us.